We're rolling. Are you? I am. We don't have to second guess my rolling abilities. Do we have to second guess mine? I Whatever. Know. I don't know. Hey, who am I? Hey, that was a great shot. I wasn't recording. <laughs> hey, so today I want to talk about steaks. I see a lot of you guys out there uh, making fantastic looking food, but I do see a lot of questions on how to get a perfect steak. So in this video, I'm gonna share some tips and tricks, things that I like to do, CJ. Some one, two, three. Give me the one, a, two. A, B, C. It's easy, easy as one, one, two, three. Something happened. Yeah, the, your lack of ability to stay in tempo. Yeah, <laughs> it hurts me. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, A, B, C. Easy as one, two, three. Ah, oh, it really hurt my feelings. Yeah, well, good. I hurt my own feelings. That's good. Let's talk about steak. Okay. All right, tip number one. Maybe this is one and two. One. Let's. Okay, one. Bring your steaks up to room temperature before you start cooking. There is some science to this. Uh, we'll get into collagen and gelatin and conversions oh. later, you big nerd. Hey. Why are you gotta talk about it, CJ? I, I'm sorry, we'll get to I that even mentioned it. In just a minute. Um, but you wanna bring your steaks up to room temperature first. Tip number one, uno, numero uno. Mm. And I'm on You're a roll. You're struggling. A Somebody <laughs> needs to ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. Bring your steaks up to room temperature. Tip number one. Tip number two, make sure the surface of your steak is dry. So uh, CJ, check this out. Uh, the sun's kind of beaten down, so some of that moisture is coming out. But you'll notice even on a steak um, that you get from the grocery store, there's gonna be a little bit of moisture on the steak. And moisture is the enemy of a beautiful sear, a beautiful crust. Moisture, bad. Moisture, bad. Dry, dry, good. good. So we wanna make sure that we are completely dry, or at least as dry as we can be, so that the second our steak hits the hot black stone, we're getting that instant Maillard reaction, that instant crust and sear. Otherwise, if you have too much moisture, if you have any liquid on there, even a marinade, uh, if you have too much liquid, it's gonna start simmering uh, and boiling before you start searing, right? So we want Maillard reaction. Maillard reaction is basically all the, the it's different than caramelization. We talk about this a good bit. Uh, mm -hmm. Onions, uh, most vegetables have a bit of sugar content in them, and as they start to cook, as the heat starts to penetrate those sugars, they caramelize, giving us a different color, like onions when you make French onion soup, mm -hmm. or you caramelize them for your beautiful burgers. Um, Maillard is the same effect, but in steak. So you, there are some sugars in protein, but it's not the same kind of sugars. Makes perfect sense. Then there we go. There we go. All right, uh, something else I like to do, this isn't really like a super awesome tip, but I like to season my steaks uh, with oil and not my griddle. Hey, so this is a this is something that I think is important. You say don't have any liquid, no moisture, but all of an oil is not in that right. category. This is not the same, right? So if you have water or a liquid, that has to cook off uh, before we start searing. But oil, on the other hand, becomes the medium for heat. So this oil is gonna help uh, distribute the heat evenly on our steak. Now, I don't want to, oh, hey now, oh. try to get away from me. I've got two different steaks here. I've got a top sirloin and I've got a beautiful ribeye. I am definitely ribeye guy. Ribeye guy? Bro. It's that fat, it's that fat. You can really tell the difference if you look close, CJ. Ribeye has these beautiful, large channels of fat, and then a good marbling, the intermuscular fat right in here as well, while leaner steaks uh, don't. They only have the intermuscular, or sometimes they have a fat cap, like a New York strip, mm -hmm. something like that. But I'm gonna hit this just with salt. This is absolutely personal preference, um, but I like to season in stages. What do you think about that, CJ? Okay. Stage, stage one and two seasonings. Stage phase, or phase, phase seasoning. Okay. What I like to do is season a little bit now, a little bit in the middle, a little bit later, and then a little bit at the end, so we don't want to over season. I don't know if you notice, CJ, but these, these are serious steaks. So the definition of serious <laughs> so is right here. So this is a very thick steak. Now the reason I want that on my griddle is because we've got direct heat. I'm just getting some of the sides mm -hmm. with some of that leftover seasoning. If you wanted to, you could actually season uh, your plate like that, and then get that fat side. Just cover it everywhere, man. Yeah, just get a good, even little seasoning layer. Um, 
So a thicker steak gives us more wiggle room uh, to get up to the temp that we want while still, still giving us enough time on the direct heat to get that sear, to get that crust, and that's what we want. So I have my 36 inch set to stun. Is that, what, is that what's going on? That's out? what that is. So I've got two burners set to high, two other burners off. I'm gonna let this salt sit on my steaks for just a minute, and I'm gonna get to something I love to do. This isn't really a steak tip, is okay. it? I don't know. It's a tip to make your steaks more delicious. Okay. I'm gonna go over here on my cooler side, just off of the heat. I'm gonna add some whole garlic cloves. Now this is gonna, a little salt? All right. Just a bit of salt. Just Man, a bit of salt. Such bright light. I'm gonna get a little bit more heat. I wanna get some color. I wanna get some caramelization real quick on these. Then we're gonna slow them down. Now, we were talking about Maillard reaction versus caramelization. Uh, garlic and onion have a lot of sugar, so we're gonna get that deep, dark color. But we don't want too much of it, just a skosh, which is a real technical term to get. Oh, okay. See, we're getting that. Can you see that in there, buddy? Just getting that beautiful, yep. slight, slight yep. little bit of caramelization. It smells amazing. All right, so you can see how hot the griddle is. That's going quick. I'm gonna bring it back to my cool side. Is it better in the sun or in I'd the shade? I'd rather be in the sun. All right. So we're gonna pull it off of our heat. Now this is just getting some residual heat from this side of our griddle that is really hot, this side that is almost completely off. We're just getting that residual heat. I'm gonna okay. add some fresh rosemary. 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 Right over the top. I don't want it to be on the griddle top because I don't want it to burn. So you can break them a little bit if you want. I just want that bright aroma to kind of become one with the garlic, just like that. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of water and a dome, and we're gonna steam, oh yeah, we're gonna steam our garlic and our herbs. We're gonna let that go for, I don't know, how long would you say, buddy? Seven minutes, eight minutes. Uh, you'll notice the garlic starts to, to get really soft and we can like mix it into butter. Mm. Just on the steak, come on. So now, I'm sure you can notice, we're screaming hot here. See that? We are oh, yeah. hot, hot, hot. So we're gonna go down with our steak. Yeah, that's what we want, that instant sear. Now I'm doing two different kinds of steaks just to show you guys how it works. But by all means, if you're using something other than these two, that's totally cool, no worries. I like to give it a little bit of a push just to make sure I get full connectivity. Full contact! Full contact with that hot, screaming black stone. Beautiful. All I'm right. let that go for a minute. All right. Let that go. Uh, Quick tip on your garlic, you don't want to run out of water. Uh, so let's check it real quick. Oh. We don't want to run out of water. We're doing good. I might add. We're little, already here. Just might a bit more. more. Add a bit more here. Need one of these. Beautiful. Whew. Oh yeah. It smells amazing. Oh my gosh. You? Yeah, that smells so good. We're going to mix that garlic and that rosemary into butter because we can. There's some restaurant tips and hacks out there that not too many people know about. One of the reasons why your steak tastes so good at a restaurant. Mmm, load it down. All the butter. All the beer. <laughs> Is that it? The beer? Bill. Okay. Montel Bill. What? It means to mount with butter. Oh. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's give our steaks, I don't know, three minutes or so. You wanna peek real quick? Okay. So do you wanna peek? Let's just take a little peek real quick, see how we're doing. Yeah, we're starting to get some Maillard reaction. We're looking really great, but we are definitely not there yet. Now, this is why I like using a much thicker steak. Um, I would say these are. this is a steak for two. I think the idea of cooking a much bigger steak, knowing I'm gonna slice it family style for two people, makes a lot more sense for me to get the temp that I want versus thinner steaks that cook faster, because then you have a much smaller window of error where you, you get into like perfectly cooked into overcooked in a matter of minutes. Or yeah, a it minute. happens really fast. It does happen really steak. fast when a steak is that thin. So we don't want little pancakes. We want a hunk of <laughs> meat. So we'll be back in three yeah. minutes. All right. All right. There we go. <laughs> We're gonna flip our steaks over. Now check that sear out. We've got that beautiful crust. That's the Maillard reaction. That's what we're looking for. We're gonna let those go for just a bit. Both steaks are looking pretty fantastic. Now earlier I talked about Seasoning and stage. Seasoning. Oh, so this is stage two. This is stage numero dos. Ooh, yeah, baby. So this seasoning is fantastic, but I feel like if it sits on the flat top too long, it'll burn, and we won't actually get um, the flavor without burning some of the uh, 
ingredients. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I'm gonna go a little bit now because we're not really blast searing this one side either. Got it. Let's have some of that. And then, you know what else you do? What? We could take these, flip them on their side, like lean them up against um, the wall, and that way we get that fat side or the sides that don't have any uh, texture just yet. And we can add those um, just using our griddle in creative and fun ways. Well, well. To get every single little bit of that fat crispiness. You're a clever individual. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now those only need just a minute on that fat side because it is all fat. Um, so it'll cook really quickly. This is looking beautiful. You know what I'm gonna do, CJ? Talk to me. I... Talk to me, Goose. Talk to me, Goose. I'm gonna bring this over into some of that beef fat over here. I'm gonna hit that with a little bit more water and I'm actually gonna kind of steal some of that flavor from the steak, get it into my garlic, and help it finish cooking just a skosh. They call this deglazing, where we're pulling up, see all that seasoning that was there with the beef fat? Now, it's in our garlic, Mike. Nice. It's in our garlic. Good Let's move, see. bro. Let's let go just a second longer. Let's, uh, let's grab our ribeye, because it will definitely be done first. That is just, that's gorgeous. Can you see this? Oh, I can. You tracking me? You following me? You following me? Follow me? Follow me? Oh, I was We're tracking. We're going to let this rest for just a bit. Now, this is very, very important with your steaks. You got to let them rest because it's, it's been through some stuff, CJ. It's been a, it's been a tiresome day for that steak. Your steak has it's been through some stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know what? This um, sirloin is a lot thicker. So I'm actually going to, I love the sear that I'm getting here. Let me make sure I get some of that fat. Because I lost it when I sold my garlic, but I want to cook this a touch longer. Let's go. Yeah, I'm gonna add just a bit of olive oil here yeah, because. Good idea. Kinda Cause you stole all the I, goods, man. I stole all the beef fat. <laughs> I'm gonna let this cook a little bit longer only because it's so much thicker. We're gonna let that go for just a bit. You can see we're getting fantastic caramelization. Maillard reaction, that's the caramelization of protein. We're gonna let that go just a touch longer. We're almost in glory town, Mike. Alrighty. How do you feel about this garlic? I'm super excited. All right, so typically if I was making a true compound butter, like a rosemary garlic compound butter, I'd want to pull this garlic off and let it cool down before mashing it into some cold butter or, or softened butter. But I'm not waiting. No, <laughs> we ain't doing it. I ain't got the time for it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this beautiful garlic and we're gonna go right on top of some butter. Whoa, Whoa I'm falling and oh. so is the garlic. Ah. So I'm gonna put my garlic right here into a big bowl. Now, since it's really hot, it's definitely gonna melt this butter, but that's okay. That's all right. Yeah, oh, thing. dude, it's like immediately in oh, turning yeah. into rivers of glory. Stunning and gorgeous. So now, that was fresh garlic, not very long ago, but when you use a fork, you can actually, pre it's like super soft now, you see that? Yeah. It just mashes. Like that is where the flavor is, that's where the texture is, you just see, it just, so smooth and beautiful. So I'm going to smash all of this garlic as much as I can. You can leave some bigger pieces, some smaller pieces. It's completely up to you. We're just gonna mount this flavor into our butter. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? Huh. A little bit more steakhouse. Wait, wait, oh, hold on. Yeah. What? Another? Big gulps, huh? <laughs> Kill. Hey guys. Oh, big gulps, huh? All right. Well, see you later. I'm gonna hit this with some seasoning. This is a nice thing too, you can have this on the side so that every guest doesn't have to have it. Okay, let's flip our steak one more time, buddy. Okay. Oh my goodness. Dang it. Almost the there. Yeah, well, I'll bring it to you. Show can me. You see those? It's oh. not bubbling anymore. Hang on. Gotta do the magic, the magic shot. Okay. It's a magician's. David Copperfield. <laughs> You're the David Blames of steak. Oh, oh, that's nice. Right, great Got it. coverage. Leave that there for just a second longer. You know, someone asked me this question the other day about when to know when a steak is done. Um, there's a fun little trick I like to use. It's a grip trick, but it's all about repetition and feeling. So you're gonna have to cook a bunch of steak yeah. to get it just right. Otherwise, you can use a thermometer and check its temperature, but. Which is fine. Ain't nobody got time for that. Which is fine. It's fine. I just don't, yeah. I'd rather feel it. So here's a fun little trick. You take your hand, <clears throat> close it like a fist, but don't squeeze it. 
right? So this is loose, right? Yeah. Just close it like a fist. Now the way this feels right here, that's what rare feels like. Now do a half strength grip. That is what medium feels like. And then do a full grip. Oh, that, that full grip what went, was so hardcore, it made me go out of focus. <laughs> <laughs> so when I come over to my steak, I can feel, I can feel that we're where I want to be. Okay. Oh dang. Oh dang. Yeah, come on with it. So I'm going to bring this over. We'll let this start to rest as well. Now, the reason we rest a steak, and we're actually going to rest with all this beautiful garlic. I'm going to put this on top. You know what? I need a spoon for this one. Oh. I can't be I can't be missing out on that butter. I was hoping you're about to run. But... Oh man. You see this? Yes. I'm you're hoping I was gonna run? What a yep. jerk. Yep. I'm actually gonna let my steak rest with this garlic rosemary butter action. I can't even throw one of these on there. Why so not? as it's resting, it's absorbing a lot of those beautiful flavors from the garlic, the butter, and the rosemary. I mean these are really simple to do. You can have any side dish you want with these, but I mean right where we are. Man, this is caveman legendary. That's just, holy whoa. Yeah, I'm seeing like a river of but butter sliding down the steak. The old river of butter. That sounds like the, like a song lyric. Should so, be. So you know, river of butter flowing down the steak. I ain't seen medium well <laughs> since go, you Johnny I shot Cash. that snake. What? I did kill a snake the other day. Yeah. Water moccasin. Oof. Tried to eat my child. Oof. So the reason we let our steaks rest, uh, maybe this is tip three or four. I don't even know what tip we're I'm on. not sure where we're at. Tip this one tip this, tip this. Uh, let it rest because your steak's been through some stuff right like there's so much going on the heat is just all over the place on the inside of that steak and we need it to come up to temperature evenly and slowly before cutting it otherwise those juices are gonna make a run for it they're out the door you've lost all the juiciness in your steak now earlier we talked a little bit about collagen and fat and CJ's eyes started glossing over but there is some really interesting science in that intermuscular that collagen fat that's in every steak. Now just because you don't see like a big band of fat doesn't mean your beef doesn't have fat in it. Collagen is kind of those little little bits of fat that you don't see and collagen needs to come up to 120 degrees before it converts to gelatin and gets really juicy and wonderful, right? So the way we did our steak, we brought it up really fast, we put it off to the side, we're letting it rest. As, it re as it's resting, the temperature is evenly distributing throughout the steak and all that collagen is starting to break down into gelatin, giving us a juicy, wonderful steak. Are you awake? I, I just, my brain is dehydrating. <laughs> I need you to ring the bell, please. Hey, there he is. Here. All right, um, typically we give this a little bit more time to rest. I need to. We should. Let's just give it a second. Let's be back in two. I need to leave because I want it. Don't do it. I want that. Don't you do it. I want that. All right, it's been a few minutes. Time to do the do. Uh huh. Time to so do it. Do excited it to it. about this. Let's do. Let's. Uh, we don't need that pot just now. So let's pull this onto our cutting board. It's had a chance to rest. That garlic. It's had a chance to marry with all the delicious juice. Dude, look at all this beautiful. Oh stuff. yeah, we got to play with that juice. Oh, we're not. This is done. You ain't going. Where you going? <laughs> You're going. Nowhere. <laughs> where you going? Nowhere. That's right. So I mentioned earlier the idea of having one steak per person versus uh, doing a steak for two. I'm I'm a fan of the steak for two. Oh, for Jiminy, reasons like Jiminy. this, right? We get to have more of like a platter family style action uh, where we just have these beautifully cooked steaks. Now here's something interesting. My mother always used to freak out about steaks and think that they were too rare because it's something that happens after you've cut it, after you've exposed it to air. Now, uh, I don't know if you can see here, we, we're at a pretty good medium here, mm -hmm. um, but it's actually it's closer to medium rare. And you'll notice it in just a few minutes because uh, as the cut side of the steak hits that open air, it's gonna start to bloom. And once it blooms, it actually gets a deeper red color. So people that are afraid of rare might look at a medium, a medium rare steak and see, even right now, CJ, can you see it starting to bloom out right here? Mm -hmm. Like the color will start to change over the course of a few minutes. Uh, so we're gonna let that sit for just a couple of, no, we're not, I'm gonna eat it. Can you see this right here? Can mm -hmm. you see this majesty? Do you see how just it just spreads? Yeah. I want to eat it, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat it. Get that right there. That, my friends, uh, that's a fatty bite, and that's my jam. Yes, sir. I can get down that fat. So this is a beautiful, juicy, flavorful steak. 
But you know what I need, CJ? What? Some more seasoning? One last level. One last stage. So, if I were serving this, I would do one of these, buddy. I would serve it family style. So I would give it this old, this old action. All right, now once I have all this surface area exposed, you know, let's put it on our platter. Because we have oh, all this, look at all juice. this. I know, look at all man. this. You like the juice, huh? You like it, juice. I'm gonna get you more juice. Okay, here we go. Going platter style. Now I'll just load up this beautiful plate of meat. Oh, look. Oh, Come I put on, that, uh... let's, let's wrap this up already so. Hey! Because I, I want to eat. <laughs> I really, I want some of this. I'm gonna hit this at the very end with just a bit more of that steakhouse seasoning. Now, this is more like a garnishing salt at this point, so it's gonna just taste 100% like the seasoning without altering any of its flavor profiles. You wanna do this one too? Sure. Get yourself a sharp knife, thin, elegant slices, serve it family style, take your time, season in layers, watch your technique. My friends, you will be rocking the backyard. <laughs> no, hand it down. You haven't even had a bite yet. No. <laughs> There you go, sir. Oh, there we are. Wait, oh, all right, <laughs> wait. <laughs> uh, you guys can find recipes like this at blackstoneproducts.com. If you're on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button down below and that little bell icon so that you get an email every time we post a video. Check out Teespring, buy some fun t-shirts and check out the website and the local Walmart and buy some yeah. amazing goodness. If you haven't had the uh, steakhouse. Go get it. <laughs> CJ eats it like a snack. Just yep. Down it. All right, thank, uh, thank you guys. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks, guys. I'm Chef Nathan Lippy. I'll see you guys in the next video.